Welcome back to Observing the Sabbath. I am your host, Nathaniel Molnar, and I am joined once again by Johnny Gifford. Johnny, thanks for being here. Always a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me, Nathaniel. Always great to have you. Uh, and we are finally doing Sabotage, our by far most requested album to do here on the channel. Uh, we just did, I did Hole in the Sky, kicked off the album. What a great song, by the way. That's a that's a phenomenal song. Um and now we are continuing on through with, and we're going to roll in uh, two songs into one, because I didn't think it was necessarily worth uh, doing a full standalone video for about 40 seconds of an instrumental. So we have, we're going to be doing two today, two for the price of one. You've got uh, Don't don't Start Too Late. You got that song, uh, the slight instrumental, which leads us right into Symptom of the Universe. Uh, so Johnny, before we get started with this, I just wanted to kind of get your thoughts on um, where we're standing right now. So, we've had the five albums that we've done so far. Uh, Sabbath, they put out five albums in three years. They took off their first full year since they started as a band in 1974. Now they're back in 1975. You're looking ahead at Sabotage. What are your thoughts as we go into this album? Well, as the name suggests, for this album, they were felt like they were kind of sabotaged by, um, you know, studio execs, lawyers, people like that. So they're just kind of out here trying to rise above all of that and make a record that's still true to themselves and, um, you know, doing what they do. And I think that, you know, their execution for this album is still great. Um, some of the, like, strongest tracks, some of the most varied, most expansive, like, tracks genre-wise, I guess, on this album at least from like the, the couple of songs that we're going to do together. Um, it really jumps all over the place um, in different areas. Like you can hear different areas of like rock and metal um, moving forward, like up until today that have entire genres, but Black Sabbath can just dip into for like a song or even half a song and it's still them, you know? So I think this is just once again, showing how um, influential they are and, um, and how they can continue to just like pump out really good sounding stuff and really like genre bending and shaping sounding stuff, even while being uh, under extreme pressure from like, you know, lawsuits and legal stuff that won't stop them. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with everything you just said. I was sort of uh, talking about when in the hole in the sky video, I was sort of mentioning how I think a lot of the times when there's really sort of challenging circumstances and uh, hardships, it can a lot of times it can yield the best results when it comes to art. Um, and I think that a lot of the personal struggles that they were going through behind the scenes in the making of this album, it kind of led to them uh, really fueling a lot. And you see that a lot with the writ, especially at the end of the album. They channeled a lot of their frustrations and their anger and, and everything that was going in into the music. And it created or it, it resulted in probably their heaviest their darkest their most like sinister album uh and i think it made for some really great music yeah i totally agree and you, you spe were specifically mentioning the writ there right mm. which is a song that ozzy wrote no yeah uh one of the very few uh if only act like songs that ozzy sat down and wrote out himself uh yeah. and he details about how um uh, he just took uh, all this frustration and disappointment and anger and sadness that he had in the whole process of everything that was going on behind the scenes and just and when you look at the lyrics for the writ not only is it incredibly well written like nearly poetry but it is long like it's a long song he wrote a lot um he really just poured so much of himself and what he was feeling into that song. And I think it makes, for the longest time, The Writ was my favorite Sabbath song. Uh, it's not now. It's probably in the... It, it's in a, it's higher up on my list. Um, but The Writ is just phenomenal. Um, and, and one of their most unique and different sounding songs as well. Um, yeah, o Ozzy, probably the only song that saw Ozzy, Ozzy actually sat down and wrote out himself. Cool. Should we uh, get into the the songs? 
Yeah, let's do it. Let's get right into uh so we're gonna kick off with don't start too late, and we're just gonna roll straight into uh Symptom of the Universe from there. Are you ready? I'm ready. Alright, so this is Don't Start Too Late, followed by Symptom of the Universe. And now. So we got another uh, fluff piece of the yeah. album. <laughs> This one's for you, Fluff. <laughs> yeah, a nice little bit. Although it, it also sort of sounds more along the lines of the rest of the Sabotage album. Like, it's not like a Laguna Sunrise or a like this nice, beautiful orchestral piece. It sort of has a little bit more of an edge to it while being an instrumental. Yeah, I almost kind of get, like, Western cowboy vibes from this, hmm. from this song. And I like and how short it is. Yeah, definitely short and sweet. Yep. And throughout these three songs, we're going to be jumping all over the place. Like, we kind of got a western cowboy feel to this acoustic little bit. And then it's going to jump right into this just sick riff. That's, yes. Well. I'm ready. It's, a, it's about to jump in. Take and me this riff, the honestly, universe. This riff really gives me, like, I don't know, like, 80s glam rock vibes. Like, <laughs> but... Yeah. And that's not a genre I particularly like, but I love this. You know, there's, like, Black Sabbath can do anything. They and can dabble do. in any kind of, um, you know, that wasn't really a genre when they were making this, but um, it definitely influenced later music, and I still love this. You know, they just they just do it in a way that always makes me love it. Yeah, absolutely. This is just talking about riffs. Uh, I, I feel like every song you go to, you can say this is the best Tony riff. No, no, no. This is the best Tony riff. This is one of the best Tony riffs. So <laughs> it is just. <laughs> phenomenal yeah. Yeah. it's for it's like they're i think this this got to be their heaviest riff that they have like i can't think of another one that's heavier than symptom of the universe uh that's a bold claim to make i think i i know but like i can't think of like maybe black sabbath i mean that one's heavy um but like there's maybe sabbath bloody sabbath but th this is just like as heavy as heavy can come like it's just it's mm -hmm. it's it's gritty. It's and gritty let's talk as about well. During like those yas, those yas, how yes, <laughs> just really intense those drum uh, drum fills are during those yas. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, the drumming is fantastic. Bill Ward is always on point, but also Ozzy's but, vocals. Like he's just yeah. he's screaming at this point. Like, and, and and this is what I love about Ozzy's voice is that when he screams, like I, I personally I'm not a huge fan of like you know like screamo screaming in in like metal music like i don't know that doesn't but like with him when he's he's screaming it's not like a gargly scream or anything it's like a passionate emotional scream and like you hear the the emotion and the pain oh, yeah. in his voice he really conveys so it's much emotion for the sake of screaming no it's, you're yeah. exactly right and back to those drum fills during the Yaz, they're literally like four measures straight of drum fills. Like that's just, as someone who likes to drum, but definitely isn't as good as uh, as Bill, <laughs> that's just crazy to me. Like that he can just keep the tempo that consistent, and it's still very rhythmic and very like you can follow it. You don't lose time at all. But they're really like complex and interesting fills. And th there's now, something about the so this... Oh, go ahead. I was going to ask you, what is the symptom of the... A love, that, of the a love that never dies. A love that never dies. Symptom of the universe is a love that never dies. Th that's something that's interesting about this song is uh, is the lyrics are really very fantastical. Uh, it's, it's sort of reminiscent of Supernaut uh, yeah. in, in what the lyrics are like, uh, uh, which is interesting because i don't know like when you read it it's not there's sort of there's not too too much uh before you get to the to the change halfway through the song uh yeah, there isn't yeah there isn't too much of a uh too much like real substance to the lyrics it's more just sort of like fantastical it's you know, very poetic poetic yeah. love stuff I yeah feel like. But then when it takes that turn and you get into this, the next part of the song, which I think is my favorite part of the song, and maybe even just one of my favorite parts of all of Black Sabbath songs, um, one of the most beautiful things they've ever done, um, then you really get into the substance of the lyrics. 
it's a good guitar solo right there. And it's very distinct mm. from the rest of the riffs and solos that he has been doing, at least tonally. You can tell, like, oh, this isn't just Tony playing the riff. This is a solo. Yeah. And there's such a fine line between those two things with his playing. But you can just tell in the way that it's, like, really spaced out. And then... Oh, this... The way that this tone bends. Ooh. It's so good. And, and you feel, like... Like, there are some songs where, uh, in the in Sabotage where they have their change-up where it comes out of nowhere. That, you could feel the transition into this you part. Can. Yep. Oh. And this this part, despite, like, the, the whole mood of it being so different and, you know, just the instrumentation being fairly different, too, if you just, like, sing along the original riff in your head, it follows it. It's the same chords, it's the mm. same... Not the same rhythm or notes, but... You know, it's the same. It's the same tempo and it's the same uh, melody, or sorry, harmony. Yeah, you can still sing that riff in your head. It <laughs> makes sense and it fits. That's really cool. I didn't know that. Same chords. Huh. Yeah. That's. I did not know that. That that makes me love it even more. But yeah. oh, this is so beautiful. Like Ozzy's voice is just incredible, incredible. Yeah, in this. Is. He hits like his best notes in the song. And that's something they do. They do this a ton on this album, with almost every song, except for, that's not an instrumental, aside from, uh, Am I Going Insane and Hole in the Sky. They have all their songs, this, Megalomania, Thrill of It All, The Rit, will have these, all of a sudden, complete change up halfway through the song, and completely change. Uh, you know, once again, just totally transcends genre. Like, they don't yeah, care. <laughs> exactly. And I, and I love the contrast of... The, the hard hitting heavy da -da 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 -da, with this beautiful melodic acoustic guitar playing and this is just there's a reason why I picked this to be the outro of every song because I just love listening to it every time I edit these videos <laughs> mm -hmm. oh is this the outro of uh, your channel it is your videos the yeah. intro yeah. is Supernaut and the outro is Symptom of the Universe what a nice pairing yeah it's ah uh, I could just listen to this all day. It's so yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah. Oh. And we're fading Symptom out. Symptom of the Universe is like a top. Yeah, we fade out. Symptom of the Universe is a top, top, top tier. Like, definitely, at least for me, top five, if not top three, best Sabbath song ever made. I, I think it's just absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, I would agree with you there. I wonder where that stands in, like, their songs. Let's see. On Spotify, it's like... I don't think it's even in the top ten on Spotify. Hmm. No, it isn't. What are their top songs on Spotify? I'm curious. The first three are all from Paranoid. It goes Paranoid, Iron Man, and War Pigs. Um, with, like, and the, the plays on those are astronomically higher than, like, say, Symptom of the Universe is, like... 13 million and those ones are in mm. like paranoid's like f almost 500 million and the others are like one to 200 million i'd say i'm probably about 10 million of those <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah oh yeah symptom of the universe and i think symptom like w we've talked about on this channel before you have like i've said i'm i'm not surprised that paranoid iron man and war pigs are their most popular ones on spotify because i think those are the ones that even people who aren't big sabbath fans will know those songs and will probably like them uh symptom of the universe i think is in that layer of outside of for those who don't really know a ton about sabbath they may not know symptom of the universe but a lot of the people who are in on sabbath appreciate love symptom of the universe and think it's one of the best um and yeah as i've gotten to know them more you, you know you, you you have the surface level hits and then you have like the cult hits like if you really know them then you have your own hits yeah. you know something like um i don't know whatever is not in like their top 10 let's see like sweet uh, leaf would be one that's in there i'd say yeah and symptom of the universe for sure even super not yeah Absolutely. I, I think Supernaut and Symptom of the Universe are very good pairing for songs. They kind of have, they have very similar uh, themes and similar uh, styles in their lyrics. They both sort of have just these hard-hitting, piercing uh, main riffs. They also kind of have a similar kind of change-up. 
But I think what what stands out to me, what I love so much about Symptom of the Universe, if the song was just the first half of the of the song, the heavy da 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 if it was just that and it kind of ended in the middle of the song, it would have been a really good song. I would have loved it and it would have been, you know, it would have been classic in its own right. But what makes this a legendary song is the change up, is the acoustic, the complete contrast of tones and styles and the emotional vocal performance from Ozzy in the second half where he's hitting notes um, that he he has not hit in his career thus far and I don't think really hits ever again. He really, I think, I, I've said this before, I think Ozzy's vocals get better and better and better with each album and then it kind of peaks at Sabotage. Uh, and then it kind of dips down when you get into technical ecstasy and never say that he's still good in those, but he doesn't have the same dynamic range that he has in say sabotage in technical ecstasy or never say die. And he doesn't really kind of come back into that until he gets into his solo career. But, uh, sabotage I think is the best Ozzy's ever been vocally. Um, and you really hear it. In Symptom of the Universe. You hear it in a lot of other songs too, but when you get to Symptom of the Universe and you hear those notes that he hits, I, it, it's it's just, it's beautiful. Yeah, certainly the most dynamic I've heard him thus far in, um, you know, going in order on the, in the Black Sabbath albums. Yeah. I respect the hell out of it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, this is just, this, and I, I think this just encapsulates this one song, encapsulates so much of what the album Sabotage is. And, and what we love so much about it. We love how heavy it is, how gritty it is. We love uh, how it changes things up, how it constantly reinvents itself. We love um, Ozzy's vocal range. We love Tony's uh, great riffs. We love Bill's drumming. We love Geezer's bass. We love the lyrics. We love everything that we love about Sabotage is really all within this nice, neat little package in this one song. Uh, and so I think it's a shining example for uh, the album. I do have to say, I think Symptom of the Universe, I think, is my favorite song on this album. Uh, but there are a, a couple of close seconds. Uh, as we get through the album, we'll kind of talk more about, because there are some phenomenal songs on this album. But I do think uh, Symptom of the Universe takes it for me as my favorite of this album. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I can usually pick a standout favorite for most of their albums, but this one's really tough. Symptom of the Universe, of course, is up there, but I honestly mm -hmm. wouldn't even know where to start, just based on how different all of these tracks are, too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And and I for it's always surprised me that so many people said uh, Sabotage was their favorite album, because I feel like the, the best songs on Sabotage, nobody really talks about. I absolutely, uh, I think by far the most under-talked about, under-appreciated song Sabbath has ever done is Thrill of It All. And I hear, n not even in Sabbath circles do I hear people talk about Thrill of It All. Um, and nobody talks about the writ. Uh, more people talk about Megalomania than those two songs, but not many people talk about Megalomania. You know, there there's a lot of songs on here for it to be so many people's favorite album. Not too many people uh, really talk about the, the best songs on this album, which I think is kind of interesting. Yeah, I totally agree. This is this is probably their most underrated album. I yeah. Would say. Um. So, which is why I think uh, so many people who know Sabbath, who are in the know on Sabbath, will say that this is their favorite because it's one that flies so much under the radar. Um. But yeah, I think and I, and kind of bringing it back to uh, "Don't Start Too Late." Uh, it's a nice little, uh, prelude to Symptom of the Universe. You get a nice little kind of, and almost kind of, uh, foreshadows the more acoustic part that you get in the second half of Symptom of the Universe, because you kind of have, you have a little bit of an acoustic part leading into it, but it's not quite the same tone as the latter half of Symptom of the Universe. It's a little bit more in tone with the sound of the first half of Symptom of the Universe. So you get this nice little, uh, you know, gu guitar strumming bit. Then you go right into the heaviness of Symptom of the Universe, uh, and then you get the switch up halfway through, and then you close out with this beautiful acoustic piece that fades out. It's really just, as a whole package, 
just excellent. Yeah, I would totally agree. I don't think I have anything more to add on that. I think we've summed it up pretty well. Yeah, I think that's 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 everything I've got to say about Symptom Universe and Don't Start Too Late. The question is, guys, I want to know from all of you, what are your thoughts? First, what are your thoughts on the instrumental Don't Start Too Late? But then what are your thoughts on Symptom of the Universe? Do you agree with everything that we're saying? Maybe you have a differing opinion. Maybe the song doesn't do it for you nearly as much as it do- works for uh, the rest of us. I want to know what are all of your thoughts. Leave them all in the comment section below. Well, once again, I'm Nathaniel Molnar. I'd like to thank Johnny Gifford for being here. Johnny, thank you so much for joining me for this video. Thank you. I love to rock out. Absolutely. And what a perfect song to rock out too. Uh, so you can like, you can comment, you can subscribe for more content and stay with us as we continue on through Sabotage as we tackle the next song on the track list, which is Megalomania, which is a very, uh, very interesting and dynamic song to talk about in of itself. I can't wait to discuss it. So until then, until we talk about Megalomania, thank you for watching. <laughs>